Today we're going to work on section 10.3, which is uh, using some of the rules for radicals. I want you guys to remember that radicals function very much like x or y, like a variable would in a function or in a um, polynomial or any of that stuff. It's going to function very similarly. So right now, this first um, rule they give us, the product rule, if n radical a and n radical b are real numbers, then n radical a times n radical b is n radical a b. So um, what this tells us is that it's got to be the same root, right, um, in order for it to be able to be multiplied by each other. So if there's a square and a cube, then you have it. This rule doesn't work. So what this says is square root of five times square root of 7 equals the square root of 5 times 7, which is the square root of 35. So for this one, um, that's it. You're finished. You need to always be checking to see, can this radical simplify? If there was something that was a perfect square that could come out, then you would need to do that. So again, same idea here. When you multiply these two, you get the radical 10y times radical 3x, which gives me radical 30xy. Again, no perfect squares or anything can't be simplified. This would just be your answer. This one, you're going to use regular fraction operations. Um, if you remember, when you multiply a fraction, you multiply your numerator by your numerator and your denominator by your denominator. Okay? So you get radical 55a over az. So this should be fairly simple for the most part, nothing too complex. Dividing is very similar. Um, when you have two radicals, you can split the radical and then simplify as need be. And that's a helpful tool to have. So for this one, it splits to radical 16 over radical 25. Hopefully you're getting used to these perfect squares and um, the way they behave, the numbers that are perfect squares. So the square root of 16 is 4 because 4 times 4 gives me 16. And the square root of 25 is 5 because 5 times 5 gives me 25. So that would be my answer. If this fraction that I got could simplify, I would need to do that also. So we get the square root of 100 over the square root of 81. Again, two perfect squares. The square root of 100 is 10 and the square root of 81 is nine. And we would just answer this 10 over nine. Remember, we're not gonna go to a decimal. We don't need to go to a mixed number unless it specifically asks us to. For this one, it goes to the square root of 11 over the square root of 25. The square root of 11, 11 is prime, so it is not a perfect square, so it would just say, stay the square root of 11. The square root of 25 would go to five, and your answer would then be the square root of 11 over five. For this one, we have the square root of y to the eighth over the square root of 16. So for me, with the um, variables, this numerator that's y to the 8th, the square root of y to the 8th, I like to think about this as a fraction. We learned about the fraction notation in the last section. So I like to think about this as y to the 8 over 2, right, because this is a square root. And then I just simplify this fraction. Now this 8 over 2 is in the exponent, right? So this is still y to the 8 over 2, which means that it simplifies to y to the 4th. Um, but for me, it's easier to think about this simplification process as a division that rather than thinking about how many y's come out. You can think about it that way, right? So for it to be a square, um, you need two y's. And if I have eight y's, then I have y squared times y squared, right? When I multiply that, I add, so I get two plus two is four, so I have another y squared times another y squared, which gives me four that can come out, right? Each y squared can come out, so that leaves me with my y to the fourth. That's the other way to think about it. For me, personally, thinking about it with division is easier. The 
bottom is just a number so the square root of 16 is 4 or 4 so y to the fourth power over 4 so another example here again first step you want to split that radical it helps you be able to see what's happening um, it makes it a little bit clearer okay so if you do x to the 6, the square root of x to the 6 and the square root of y to the 4th, like I said, if you think about it like division, because this is a square, I can say x to the 6 divided by 2 and y to the 4th divided by 2 all over. The square root of 64 is another one of those perfect squares. So you're looking at 8. Again, hopefully those are becoming more familiar. And then you just have to simplify your fractions for your exponent. So you have x to the 6 divided by 2 is 3 and y to the 4 divided by 2 is 2 all over 8. Okay, um, last one here. Again, they already split this one, um, but you can see that now this does not simplify because I have 1x and 1y and they're both in a square root. So for this one, I'm actually going to go the other way. I'm actually going to make it into one radical and have x to the fifth, y to the eleventh over xy. And if you remember those exponent rules, um, then you'll remember that when you have a fraction, you should subtract your exponents, which means I would get x to the five minus one, because it's to the power of one, times y to the eleven minus one. Okay, which would give me the radical x to the fourth and y to the tenth. Now I can do division or simplifying radicals, whatever works for me. It would be x to the fourth divided by two, which is x squared, and y to the tenth divided by two, which is y to the fifth. Okay.